guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. This current video is on reliability block diagrams, designing reliability and safety into your system. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and let's get started! In this video, we will cover definitions, theory, examples for reliability block diagrams, and key takeaways from this discussion. So what are reliability block diagrams? Reliability block diagrams are a tool to determine the overall reliability of a system based on the number of series and parallel functions, subsystems, and components within a system. Reliability block diagrams are a way to visualize redundant and non-redundant components within a system to find the overall reliability of a system. The more redundancy that is built into a system, the higher the reliability will be for that particular system. The name of the game in system reliability is to build redundancy into your system for key operational and safety functions. You should absolutely have redundancy built into safety mechanisms for your system, but sometimes you will need to weigh costs versus probability of failure for the reliability of key functional operational functions. This takes experience and a well thought out mitigation plan to weigh the part costs versus warranty occurrences and costs. Redundancy is important in almost every system you can think of, from rockets to data service to critical communication systems for aircraft. For instance, with a rocket, you do not want the system to crash or explode if one engine fails, and you do not want the rocket to crash or explode if a flight controller has failed, which is why system functional redundancy is important. Likewise, with a data server, you want to have redundancy built into your system to ensure data can be recovered if a hard drive crashes, as an example. With a communication system on an aircraft, you want to have redundancy built into the system to ensure that the pilot can communicate with the ground flight control. We will cover these examples later in this video on reliability block diagram usage and examples. So what do we mean by reliability? Reliability is expressed as the natural logarithm E with the exponent negative lambda times T, where E equals two with a bunch of numbers that I don't feel like reading out after this decimal point. Lambda is the failure rate, which is 1 over MTBF, which is mean time between failures. T is the duration of the operational life of the system in hours, cycles, miles, and so forth. Reliability of a system is pretty low if all your components or functions operate in a series type configuration. Even using a high reliability component, a series system will have a low reliability, which gets worse depending on the number of components and complexity of the system that is in series. The equation for reliability of a series system is reliability of the component 1 times reliability of component 2 times reliability of component 3 and blah 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 and so forth for as many components as you have in your system. Let's say you have 30 components that are all have a reliability of 0 0.99. Pretty good, huh? You have spent a pretty penny on these parts and they're really reliable, so good job on that. Well, not really, because you're an idiot and you put all 30 of these components in series configuration within your system. So what does this look like? Since reliability is the same for all components, we can be lazy here and take 0.99 to the 30th power. Taking 0.99 to the 30th power, you get 0.7397 blah 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 blah. Holy cow, your system is not very reliable. Don't be an idiot and take this system into production as it currently is designed now. Back to the drawing board with this design, now let's redesign the system assuming many of these components have the same function or can perform the same work of a neighboring failed component. We will make a parallel tree of three for every other three components. Pictured is the reliability equation for components that are configured in a parallel circuit. This is assuming that all of the components in the circuit are redundant. Series and parallel equations can be combined to calculate the overall reliability of a system with series and parallel circuits as pictured. Once again, since all of our reliability values are the same, we can take a shortcut here and produce the following equation as pictured. Or we can work smarter and not harder and simplify the equation even further as pictured. Let's see what we end up with here. The reliability of the series parallel circuit using the same reliability values that we use in this series example produces a reliability of 0.8600 blah 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 blah. Not the greatest reliability in the world, but way better than just configuring all of these suckers in series as we did in the previous example. Now if you are like me and you like to visualize stuff in a simple to read format, the reliability block diagram is the way to go. So let's go ahead and show the power of reliability block diagrams in more detail now. 
And what better way to do this than to jump into some examples? I know you are at the edge of your seats right now and cannot contain the excitement because this is the most exciting part of all my videos. Pictured is an example of a system with three components in series and two components in parallel. As you can see, each component has a reliability value and the two parallel components are redundant, meaning that one of the components can compensate for the functions of the neighboring component that failed. I went ahead and cubed up the three series components in this example to simplify the equation even further since they all have the same reliability value. Let's go ahead and pause the video and I want you to go ahead and draw your reliability block diagrams and solve before continuing. All right, here is what your reliability block diagram should look like based on the criteria for this example. Let's go ahead and enter each component's reliability value into the equation we had just defined. Go ahead and solve the equation using the reliability values for each component in this example. And we end up with a system reliability of 0.9698. Depending on the function of the three series components and whether or not one of these components can compensate for the function of one of the other two components, the system could potentially be optimized further by placing the series components in parallel to improve the system's reliability even further. Let's jump into another example now. In this example, we have two components in series and four components in parallel. The catch is that two of the components must be operational for the system to work. This makes the calculation a little trickier. Pictured is the equation for finding the system reliability for this example. The part of the equation in the dotted line is the more complex than the other examples as two of the four components must be operational in order for the system to continue operation. If the component reliability values were different for each component, this example would get even more complex. Once again, go ahead and pause the video and solve. All right, let's see how you did. Here is what the reliability block diagram should look like. Let's go ahead and plug in the component reliability for each part of the system into the equation we defined. Notice I consolidated the series components in the equation to make it look even more cleaner and simplify the equation. Let's go ahead and solve this bad boy. We end up with a system reliability of 0.9995. Pretty decent system reliability in this example, but you should still look at ways to optimize your system for the highest level of reliability possible. On to the next example. We will do some real world examples after this one, so keep on watching. Here's an interesting example. We have two series components, and then we have two parallel branches with two components in series in each parallel branch, followed by two more components in series. Pictured as the equation for this example. Go ahead and pause the video and solve. Let's see how you did. Here is what the reliability block diagram should look like. Let's go ahead and plug in each component's reliability into the equation we just defined. Let's go ahead and solve. We end up with a reliability of 0.957. Once again in the real world, you will want to see if there's any room to improve the system's reliability even further. Speaking of real world, let's do some real world examples. In this example, we have four rocket engines that provide the thrust to put a rocket into space. The four rocket engines are in parallel and the reliability of each engine is 0.999. In order to complete the mission, three of the four engines must always be operational. Pictured is the equation for this example. Again, this equation was a little tricky, like example two, since there are conditional requirements that three of the four rocket engines must be operational in order to complete the mission. Go ahead and pause the video and solve this example. Alrighty, let's see how you did. Pictured is the reliability block diagram for this example. Let's go ahead and plug the component reliability values into the equation we defined. And we end up with a pretty reliable system at 0.9999 blah 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 and so forth. Let's jump into another real world example. In this scenario, we have a storage server with four parallel drives and all four drives store the exact same information. The reliability of each drive is 0.95 and the only one drive needs to be operational in order for the server to operate and save the user or company's data. Pictured is the equation for this example. Notice on the second line, I cleaned this up and I took all four components to the power of four since they have the same reliability value. 
Hit the pause button and solve now. Picture this the reliability black diagram and let's plug in those values. Let's solve the equation. This is a great example. It really shows the power of redundancy in a system to make it more reliable. So keep this example in mind when designing your systems. Let's do one more real world example. In this example, we have a communication system for a aircraft. The components include two receivers and two transmitters. And the best part is that only one transmitter and one receiver needs to work in order for the communication system to operate. The reliability of each component is 0.99. This is the final exam for this video. So I want you to design the system with these four components that will allow for the maximum amount of reliability. Determine how to configure these components. Create your reliability block diagram, write out the equation, and solve. Go ahead and pause this video and start working on this. Let's see how you did. Here is the reliability block diagram. Remember that you have one transmitter and one receiver that must be working. So you end up with two parallel branches in series. Here is the equation for this example, which shows two parallel circuits in series. Let's go ahead and fill in the component reliability values into this equation. And let's go ahead and solve. We end up with a reliability of 0 0.9999 blah 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 blah. If you got the same answer I did, great work! If you did not, go back and watch this video again and stop tweeting about how awesome my videos are and pay attention. Or reach out to me if you need more help. And that's it! Great work! Some key takeaways from this video are Redundancy improves reliability by minimizing the number of components used in series for the same functions and add redundancy to your system as feasible and technically possible and from a cost standpoint. Focus on safety. Do not compromise on redundancy for functions that are safety related. Use reliability block diagrams as a design tool. RBDs are useful design tools for ensuring that your system and design is optimized for reliability. Thank you for watching this video. If you need help optimizing your system for reliability, feel free to reach out to me at the link above or in one of the links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and have an awesome day, and stay safe during these crazy times. See you next time.